that's pretty much it. <laughs>
to Bedford City Council uh, regular meetings. If you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. tax abatement, uh, and they will be relocating, um, I believe, within the first few years, they'll have north of 65 employees uh, at the site. Yep, that's a good thing. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 2123. Uh, again, Motion to remove from the table. Uh, a speak, second by Blue Hardy. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Asbury, second by Smith. Uh, Mike, again. Uh, yes, this is similar, same uh, CRA agreement. This one is between the city and uh, Lakeshore uh, Electric, which is currently located on uh, Willis Street. Uh, Lakeshore has, uh, they're in need of expansion. They have no more room at the current facility. Uh, they went in front of the Planning Commission and they're gonna be constructing a facility north of 100,000 square feet on roughly 7.5 acres. Um, within, I believe, their application stated within uh, the first five years, they are looking to double their employment uh, and will be over 100 employees. Uh, and this is also a 10-year, 70% tax abatement for the new facility. Good. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blueberry? Yes. Smith? Yes. Hansberry? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Reports, Mr. City Manager. Just a couple of items real quickly. Um, the city did uh, notify Cuyahoga County that we are in agreement. Uh, they will be coming out, they needed the city's uh, approval, I guess, uh, 
Uh, they will be coming out and doing crack sealing on all of Center Road um, at 100% Cuyahoga County's uh, expenses. Um, it won't cost us anything. Uh, Union Street, they're going to be, uh, it does not warrant crack sealing, but they're going to put down what they call a rejuvenator um, and it extends the, the life of the roadway. Um, and they're going to be doing that as well uh, along Union, um, not the entire length, but the area that was just resurfaced a, a couple of years ago. And that as well as at 100% of uh, the county's uh, expenses. Uh, the city does have a couple of large projects coming up. One, uh, we have the waterline projects on Ennis, waterline project on Harriman. We have a pre-construction meeting for those uh, scheduled for Wednesday. So by, by the next council meeting, we will have um, uh, notice the proceed date uh, that we'll be able to share and, and follow our, our website uh, for those projects and when those get started. Uh, the city will also be going out to bid shortly as we're finishing up the uh, construction documents and the plans for Lincoln water line replacement. Um, that is also going to take place this year, um, but we have not gone to bid for that one uh, yet. Uh, and lastly, the large item is Broadway. Um, there's some legislation that we're going to be um, Council will be voting on shortly regarding the costs of Broadway. Uh, that is an ODOT project. They bid this project um, earlier this year. The bids came in. Um, they were reasonable. Um, I believe, of course I'm talking about it. I don't have my notes here real quickly. Um, out of the four bids, the lowest bid was uh, Shelley Company, and they were at $3,047,272. Dollars. Um, so that is going to be, hopefully, depending on how uh, the vote goes, uh, that will proceed this year. We have not had a pre-construction meeting for that. Uh, it's corp limit to corp limit. It's going to be a challenge. Um, but look for updates on our website, on social media. Um, they will have to maintain traffic, but I'd be lying if I said it's not going to be a challenge. Right? They're, they're resurfacing all of Broadway. There's going to be full depth repairs at a number of locations. Um, all of the handicap uh, ramps at the sidewalks, all of those will be replaced. Um, that portion is 100% on the city. Um, so look for more information to come out uh, in the coming weeks as far as notice to proceed and when that project is going to get underway. Um, as far as a schedule of events, uh, the community organizations that have worked to submit applications uh, as well as community shred days and other uh, community events that has been posted, um, I believe, on the city website. End of report. Thank you. Mr. Law Director. Oh, thank you. No report tonight. Madam Finance Director. Just real quick announcement, just a reminder that tomorrow, um, April 18th, is actually the uh, deadline to file your municipal income tax taxes, as well as your IRS taxes, but just want to remind you of that. Thank you. That's all. Well, before we get to the council reports, uh, we're going to have a slight change. We, we were talking in the, in the caucus room about our summer schedule, which on the day it's snowing, talking about s summer schedules. But we're in northeast Ohio, so that's what happens. Um, the tentative date, well, the dates we're going to meet will be... Uh, June 5th, because during, during the summer we only meet uh, once a month, uh, unless there has to be a special meeting that we would call for something special. Uh, the meetings will be on June 5th, June 26th, and August 7th. Um, so that's the dates for our summer sessions. And uh, we'll start with council with... Uh, Mrs. Spinks. Good evening, everybody. Um, this past Friday, we had a excellent turnout for the Bedford Historical Society uh, Speaker Series. It was Rick uh, Baco, uh, Baco um, talking about local Bedford artists, and I was very honored to be included in that uh, group of people. I don't think I deserved it because we have some really, really talented um, artists from the past and the present. And the next, we have the speaker series every second Friday. It's this year round. The next one will be the second Friday in May, and it will be on um, Walker, China. 
So it's always at the old church. It's always free. There's usually a few snacks. It's always at 7 o'clock. So if you get a chance to do that, um, make sure you do that. Um, ward meetings, Ward 1 and 3, will be next Monday. Is that 7 o'clock or is 8 o'clock? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And that will be me in Ward 3, Bit Flu Hardy. So uh, we'll see you there. If you live in Ward 1 or Ward 3, please come. In a report. Thank you. Mr. Janudis. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess spring, spring leak on us. Congratulations to uh, everyone who got their lawnmowers going this past weekend and got out there and you know did some yard work. It was beautiful weather and all. And, uh, I uh, want to thank you all for doing such a good job uh, maintaining the yards and whatnot. We uh, have a tendency to focus on the uh, very worst uh, yards and falling down houses, and that becomes our focal point a lot of times, but. I think uh, we uh, too often take for granted all, all the beautiful, charming uh, yards and properties uh, in our city and all the people who are doing a really good job uh, doing what they can to keep their yards up and whatnot. So I thank everyone for that. And good one. Thank you. Mr. Fluharty. Well, I had two things to say, and they both were just said. So. Uh, board meeting and also just to remind everybody to start taking care of the yards. That's it. Good report. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I just have, uh, well, I have a couple of things, but the first thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the city of Bedford and the three surrounding communities in um, Bedford Heights, uh, Oakwood, and Walker Hills will be uh, doing a Juneteenth celebration this year. It's going to be um, June 19th, uh, it's going to be at the Bedford City Schools at Bearcat Stadium. It's going to be from 5 to 7. There will be food trucks, dance, uh, health, and well, health and wellness, vendors, voter registration. A few, there will be a few more um, events there. Uh, we're trying to, uh, we, well, we will be including the uh, Historical Society since Bedford was one of the stops on the Underground Railroad, so I think that's a great thing to do. Um, there will be more information coming out and uh, to, the, to the citizens. Um, I would like to mention that Wars 2 and 4 war meetings will be 8th of May in the report. Thank you. Mr. Asbury. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple reminders. Uh, this uh, actually today started the computer and hazardous waste roundup at the service garage 100 Solon. Um, this runs through this week, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 3 p.m. And the same thing next week, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 3 p.m. Check the uh, our website for the items that are available to be dropped off. Mike, did we find out if they're going to do Saturday or not? Uh, we are. I just don't know the date. Okay. We'll do this for next. Okay. Schedule. Thank you. Um, and uh, another reminder about the BDA's fifth annual chocolate walk, Saturday, May 13th, from t noon to 5. Tickets are on sale now at bedforddowntown.org. Uh, get them before they sell out. Hopefully, we sell out. Um, Mike, so the pool house still on schedule to open up on time? Okay. Looks like a lot, of, a lot of things going on down there. So te tentatively, the uh, project should be completed. Um, end of end of May. Uh, another reminder: chipper service uh, for May is the week of May first through May fifth. Make sure you call the service department to get on the list. Um, and one thing that uh, Mike uh, uh, touched on the uh, schedule for the summer events. One thing that didn't make it was the community garage sale. We will have the community garage sale. It just didn't get in get on the schedule in time to make this posting, so look for that. Uh, hopefully by the end of the month we'll have a date for that. Uh, and that should do it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saunders. As everybody has heard, uh, 
Ward 6 is going to get torn up pretty good this uh, this year because we've got the water line going on Ennis, the water line going on Harriman, and the water line going on Lincoln. Now I would assume those all three streets will have temporary water lines, Mike. Are we letting the residents know that they are going to get connected basically through an outside faucet off those mains? I mean, Is that how they're doing it? I, I don't know. Until I have, until we go through the full uh, pre-con meeting with the contractor, which is scheduled for Wednesday, I don't have all of those specifics, but any resident affected will get notifications. Okay, because some of these people, well, I don't think anybody has sprinkler systems, so that, that's a plus. But uh, it will be a slight inconvenience for the residents, but uh, we're going to be replacing these 1920 water lines that in some cases have been blowing quite a bit here. So uh, we will get some improvements here in the ward. So just want to make sure that everybody's aware of the fact that be on the lookout if you're on those three streets that uh, you will be getting notifications for it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get going with our business here. Ordinance number 31-23. Being an ordinance amending chapter 123 entitled Rules of Council of our Codified Ordinances of the City and declaring an emergency. And we would like to put that on the first reading. I have a motion for such by Saunders, second by Asbury. Um, just to go over it really, real quickly, um, we only had a few changes. Uh, probably some of the big thing I'm just going to highlight them right now is uh, we're probably going to start this. The new rules will be effective September 1st after summer break. So give people some time to, to check it out. Uh, big change will be the meetings will start at 7 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock. <coughs> Some of this is uh, bookkeeping stuff. Like I say, very few changes. Um, in order to have to be signed by the mayor or other presiding officer by the clerk and the law director, the law director was added. Um, we. There was in the old rule, and they dated back to 1932, so they, they needed to be tweaked a little bit. Um, we used to have a lot of committees that were on the books. We don't operate by committee. We operate by council as a whole. Um, I never saw the purpose of having committees when you got seven people and then three people on a safety committee and three on a finance. Then they bring it back to council, and then we all talk about it anyhow. It seemed kind of a waste of time. Um, so, but we still left it in there if we need such, the mayor may appoint such other communities, committees as he, she deems appropriate. The mayor may choose not to establish said communities and discuss matters at the committee of the whole, so, which is what we normally do. That was a change. Uh, Robert's Rules, uh, it was the 1951 edition. Now it'll be the late, latest edition of Robert's Rules that we use. And just trying to get the highlight. That's, that's pretty much the big things that were in it. So not a lot of changes to the uh, council rules. So um, can I have a motion? Put that on first reading by Spink, second by Janudis. Uh, call roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Jasbury? <coughs> yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 32 23. 
authorizing the city manager to purchase a life pack 15 v4 cardiac monitor defibrillator from striker ems and declaring an emergency i have a motion for suspension by saunders second by smith call the roll please Kochi? yes sphinx yes Tenutis? yes flu hardy yes smith yes gasbury yes saunders yes Motion for third and final by Flu Hardy, second by Sphinx. Uh, Mike? Here. Uh, this piece of equipment, the cardiac monitor, was something that we budgeted for this year. Um, with that being said, there's a good chance that this piece of equipment won't come in until early 2024. So we wanted to go ahead and get this quote and, and get this in front of council as soon as possible. Yeah, it's just a shame how long things are taken now that uh, it's done. The cardiac uh, monitor and defib, that's, that's kind of important. We did get a new one last year, so we're not, we're not short on that. Uh, but this is, uh, we'll have them on, on all three squads. Um, call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Knudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 33-23 is an ordinance declaring the real property and structure located at 64 Center Road a nuisance and condemning the property and ordering action and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. Spink, second by Fluharty. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Gasbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Asbury. Uh, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, property, we, we've had uh, violation uh, notices on this property uh, dating back um, last year. Um, property went through two separate tax foreclosure sales with no purchaser. There's cur it is currently $95,000 plus uh, in the rears in taxes. Um, we'd like to start the process. This is uh, starting the process and in conjunction with the land bank working to remediate the blight. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. yes. Canudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 34-23. A similar, similar to the last ordinance, an ordinance declaring the property and structure located at 244 West Glendale Avenue a nuisance, condemning the property, ordering action, and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Smith, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final. I flew hardy, second by Spinks. Um, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, similar to the last uh, ordinance, this property has had violations notices for some time. Uh, they are currently uh, the corporation that owns this home, owns multiple properties throughout the city, uh, and walked away from these properties following uh, the housing crisis. This one is currently 109000 plus in the rears. In property taxes, and this is uh, allowing us to take the steps to remediate it. Yeah, and besides just being in rears of taxes, these houses are really horrible shape too. Yeah. Um, call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 35-23. Is an ordinance amending ordinance number 01723 authorizing an additional payment of $50,205.50 to the Ohio Department of Transportation for the federal project uh, known as the state, as the, as the city manager alluded to before, the State Route 14 uh, rehab project, basically, and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? 
Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final. Mike Spink, second by Flu Hardy. Uh, Mike. This is the, uh, in regards to the Broadway Avenue project and specifically regarding the bid results. As I mentioned, the Shelley Company came in at the lowest bidder. They were about uh, roughly $250,000 less than the next closest, which was Ronyak Paving. Based off of the percentages that we're required to pay, which is 15% of the overall project, um, the difference comes out to be the city would be responsible for uh, this additional uh, cost of $50,000. Um, should we not uh, agree to pay that, uh, there is a strong possibility actually the project would not go forward. Um, the state would reevaluate and go through the bidding process again, and there is no guarantee that they would come in lower. Um, our recommendation is for this amount of money uh, to move this along so this project can start uh, this year, um, authorizing the payment to ODOT, which oversees the entire project. Um, as it says, uh, overall, it's a total of um, just over $3 million. Thank you. Let's call the roll, please. Coaching? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Gasbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 36-23. Authorizing the city manager to enter into a pro professional services contract with industrial appraisal company for professional appraisal services of the city's assets and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. Zach Smith, second by Saunders. Hello, roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final. Spinks, second by Tenutis. Uh, Mike? Where do you want this, Jeff? Are we on? I'm sorry. Oh, we're on that. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, professional appraisals. This is what we're, we're required to do this to establish a value uh, for insurance purposes on all of our structures uh, as well as equipment. And this is the contract that they'll work to identify uh, those uh, values. Okay. I'll call the roll, please. Coaching? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ordinance number 37-23. Authorizing the city manager to, end, to participate in the and contract with ODOT for road salt for the 2023-24 year uh, winter season and declaring an emergency. Maybe that's why we had this because of that snow today. Uh, motion for suspension. I speak second by Flu Hardy. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Sluarty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Motion for third and final. Saunders, second by Asbury. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. This is uh, authorizing us to, to partner with ODOT, who will be going out uh, and bidding the SALT contract. This allows us to um, obtain salt at the uh, big price. Um, part of that is we have to basically guess, is what, being honest. We have to determine and give a rough guess of the tons that we're going to go through next year. Um, typically, we're always around 3,500, something like that, uh, tons. Um, this year, we're requesting um, to ODOT that we are looking for 2,800 tons. What they do is they compile all of those numbers and add it in and put it out to bid so they can secure the lowest price per ton uh, when they add all of that up. So um, the challenge is that by coming up with that number, we are required um, to pay for 90% of that, uh, one way or another. Um, I can tell you we did come in a little under this year, so we have excess salt, which is why we're looking to go a little lower next year. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Kochi? Yes. Spain? Yes. Tenutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Uh, now we come to the portion of hearing <coughs> citizens. If you wish to speak, 
please come forward, state your name, your address, and your comment. Hello, my name is uh, Mark Roberts. I live at 47 Woodrow. I'm sure most of you are aware of the situation we had this past weekend and has had since late last summer. My main gripe, which I know ordinance and laws and legislation has all cities handcuffed with the Airbnbs and the short-term rentals. That is not why I'm here. I understand that the owners are here as well, and we have discussed, and there's reason to believe that they might not have known that these things were happening. What I am here for is the reaction to these occurrences. We first been starting to call the police late August. Since then, not much was done. Because of this, I had a result to stay elsewhere on the weekends. So last fall, I decided to stay in a camper on Friday and Saturday nights in Auburn, which I'm building on 11 acres, which wasn't fun to do, telling your kids every weekend they have to go stay somewhere else because we don't feel safe. The last couple weeks, enough was enough. I've seen numerous criminal activity. I called on Friday, and I'm going to stick to just Friday's occurrences. I called on Friday at about 11.15 p.m. So I get that there was numerous girls fighting in the front yard. Please come. The problem is, these, they have scanners. They hear the call come in, and I saw Friday night a man pulled the two girls by their hair into the house and told everyone to shut up. The cops came by, didn't get out of their vehicles, asked a couple of the gentlemen still on the road, was there fighting occurring? They said no. So we got a couple calls that there's people fighting. No, we're just having fun. We're all right. All right, man, just stay inside. Not even 10 minutes pass. Now there's 60 kids in the road fighting. Did you say 60? 60. And I have a hundred, an hour and 45 minutes of video of this whole thing. So now I call again. This time is when my gloves came off. I witnessed guns being loaded into trunks of vehicles, and I have on video, in front of the cops, the vehicle fishtailing out of my driveway through Washington and continuing on at high speeds. I'm dumbfounded how there was, and I understand this pursuit, legalities of it, and let's address the situation that's going on there, why chase. The cops then took more than an hour to gain control of 50 to 60 people. And while I'm standing on my front porch videotaping the whole occurrence, I'm seeing guns being stashed around the community. I am telling the sergeant, the officers, I'm visualizing guns being stashed in bushes. Not a single officer attempted to look for guns in the neighborhood. I have this all on video of me asking cops to do their due diligence and do what they signed up for and know what their excuse is. There's not much we can do. You gotta see, I'm shook by this. For this, I understand everyone has their handcuffs tied with these guns. And it's across the country. Some people should have them, some people shouldn't. That night, as far as the eye can see, criminal activity everywhere I looked. Assaults, gun violence, 
underage drinking. All the people you don't want to have guns have these guns. What can I do? For an hour and 15 minutes, nothing was done. It's all on video. The scariest part. After making sure my family was safe by calling my 72-year-old mother-in-law to come pick up my children because they're no longer safe in the city I grew up in. The worst case scenario was right in front of me. After loading my truck at about 4.45 in the morning, I hear two guys arguing on the corner about how dumb the other one is for stashing a gun. They don't know where they're, they put it. So while I'm loading my truck, I see three guys walking through Bob Reed's rental property looking for guns in the bushes. I have 15 kids that play at my house in the summer. What am I supposed to do? If I'm telling the people that are supposed, supposed to protect and serve that there's guns getting scattered across the community and they don't do anything, who will? And know what they say? Which is disheartening. The courts and the cops got to get on the same page. That's for the last 18 months. Every time, and guys, this isn't a single occurrence. My wife's car got stolen out of the front yard. Numerous gunshots night after night. The bar at the end of the street, it's not a safe neighborhood no more. And no one wants to do anything. Why? Why? Why watch this go on? And to be honest, I'm not doing this for me no more. I'm two months from living in where I want to live. I'm doing this for the neighborhood kids that play in my house. Why can't they be safe in this community anymore? Because the courts, the cops can't get on the same page? Because the cops, and listen, this isn't about, as, long, as much as I know that that night things weren't ha handled appropriately, they're just as handcuffed as the guys that should have been that night. What can they do if the courts don't back them up? If the courts can't say, yes, if it's an Airbnb, if it's a public nuisance where citizens are at harm, put zip ties on their back, take every single one of their IDs, and take these guns off the street. Why can't that be done? If all you guys are saying that we're doing what we can, you guys are all lying to yourself. Plain and simple. So this is something I usually don't do. And like I said, I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for my family. I'm doing this for Bedford. And if nobody wants to listen, I will make people listen. I'm not just sitting around and watching. So as much as I don't want this to be a super huge thing, something has to change. Keep these kids safe. Why should these kids be nervous? Why should I have to feel con... You know, as a good human being, I need to contact that whole neighborhood and make sure that they know what I saw that night. There's things I don't even want to tell you guys what I saw. There were, they put pistols in my garbage can and put AR-15s behind my shed. What do I do with that? Just say, oh, kids will be kids? No, that's not how we should be living. And until this community bands together and does what they need to do, and it's not on them. They could have not known. It's on the citizens knowing that this ain't the same Bedford. Last year, I have a buddy that does spectrum splicing fiber. He calls me in the morning and says, Mark, I'm not trying to spook you out, but I was called to splice some lines in front of your house at Washington, and I, we had to file a police report because there was high-caliber assault rounds in the, that's what broke the fiber. When are people going to wake up and do something about this? It's just, it's sad that for an hour and 45 minutes with four cops in front of my house, that my wife and kids still weren't safe while four cops were standing in front of my house. How is that possible? How is that possible that that could happen for an hour and 45 minutes? And the sick, sickest part is they know the occurrences that are going to happen. I have on video them hanging out the window with wads of money offering 
BPD money to go away. Know what they do? They laugh about it. To me, that's bribing an official. That's rooms for action right there. Criminal activity, as far as I can see, and no actions were made. Plain and simple. Is that acceptable? You guys, is it? Of course not. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Stops. We never got a call from the police. Even after this weekend, we didn't get a call from the police. Uh, oh, excuse I'm sorry. me. I'm oh. sorry. Um, regardless, um, I, I won't bore you all with the details of how it's booked on Airbnb and so forth, um, but we put in um, a request to Airbnb today. Um, we let them know that there was a party going on here. Um, I mean, the stuff that was happening is just absolutely not okay for the neighborhood and so forth. So, um, we will do everything in our power to make sure that those do not happen anymore. So. Can I ask you a question? Sure. How do these people, approach when they want to rent it, what do they tell you they're going to do? So, the way that it works on Airbnb is we get a booking come in. Um, I went back after I heard this and I looked back at the bookings that come in, and it seems that we've had a mix. It seems that we've had a couple legitimate folks mm -hmm. um, that have some good reviews and, and so forth. Um, and then there's also the ones that I think are doing this. It's usually a woman's name. Um, we can't tell, you know, kind of what she is, but it usually says one or two guests. We list really clearly in the house rules on Airbnb that we don't allow parties of any kind. Um, there's been a few people that have reached out to us and said, hey, we want to have, you know, a poker night or so forth. And we've said, no, this is a family neighborhood. We don't do that. Um, so I think we're relatively new to Airbnb. Um, this is the only Airbnb we currently have. We have other long-term rentals. Um, and so we weren't aware that people are like booking Airbnbs to have these parties. Um, now we know what to look for and we, we just will make sure it doesn't happen anymore. But they just get booked on, on Airbnb. Yeah. And just to add to, we haven't got a, um, a call from police, neighbors, anyone. I mean. We've never even had anyone even alert us to any of I even spoke to my neighbor here, and me and him, we, we see each other regularly. We've never even had any type of communication of any of these things ever going on. He said he assumed that we, we knew, but we, we never had any type of understanding of this, and we agree. I'm sorry? No, we, I think we spoke. We spoke today. Were you the one that I spoke yes. with today? Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, no, we, we truly didn't know. Was, I mean, this is an investment for us. This is how we make our money. So, I mean, the liability for us, clearly, I mean, this is a house that we furnish, that we've got, I mean, we want nothing to do with this. I mean, let alone the fact that, I mean, you know, I have kids myself, right? I mean, I, I don't want anything to do with this stuff going on. So, uh, completely, I agree May with I everything. May I interject a question? Of course. No, no. no. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay, well, thank You'll you. have your turn. Sure. Okay. Any other questions for us? No. I appreciate your comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Like to approach. Hi, my name is Brenda Monsko. I am at 303 Center Road, just down the way. And I mean, it, it's kind of maybe a silly question, but when you said that you have no idea what was happening, um, I know when I've used Airbnbs throughout the country, it takes quite an effort when I'm leaving to make sure that I leave it really nice and tidy. So are you letting me know that all of these bookings, they've left the property inside and out very nice, that you wouldn't have known that anything sort of untoward went on? These guys all clean up real nice? They don't, I wouldn't say they clean up real nice, no. We have had some excess trash, right, which led us to believe that there was more than, you know, one person, but never to the extent of what that was happening. 
No, but nothing has been broken inside. They've used more bed sheets and towels than we would have anticipated. So the, there, there was maybe activity on your property or the resultant of the activity that would maybe clue you in that that one or two guests wanting to see historic Bedford weren't really what was going on. I, and I'm, I don't mean to be combative with you, but I'm also very passionate about, you know, I'm 40, almost 49 years old in a month, and I was born in this town, raised in this town. My father died one year ago, so I came back to take over his home. And I'm very concerned about all the, the different things that make this a really, really different feel and a, a real lack of that sense of security and pride in this town that had been mine. So please know I'm not meaning to be combative with you, but I, I like to challenge the idea a lot of us have willful ignorance to things around us. So I ask you to please not have willful ignorance or blinders on to what's happening there. I think that that is totally fair. And I would say that we expect that sometimes, like, you know, instead of, like, you know, two people, maybe they bring four and they have like, a friend or a kid. That sure. I expect those things happen and they kind of, I truly had no idea okay. that the level at all, I mean, even that, you know, seven or eight people were at the property was going on to these levels at all. So well, I, I thank you for showing up because a lot of people of would, would duck. I spent a short time living in Solon as one of your community neighbors, and that's a great place too. No, I mean, so thank you. To, we, yeah, uh, again, I mean, yeah. Probably your answer, I'm not, I actually graduated from from the area as well, so yeah. I have a lot of pride in the area as well. But yeah. as Corinne stated, I mean, I, I go to the house and clean these properties a lot of times. I mean, most of them have a, a broken fissure or a broken stool or something, and that's nothing that would alert us to think that. It was, I mean, I would think that we would even have a note on the door or just anything. We haven't had anything to indicate those okay. type of activities. Let alone say 150 people or 60 people. Okay. That, you know, I, think, I thank you for coming. And since I had the chance to step up, you know, and this, this is like way, way down on the scale from what you're experiencing. It's actually your post that got me here as the first time, and I hope to be back and be more involved. So through three Center Road, I'm just two doors up from the mosque at Gould and Center. And so when we're concerned about, you know, things that are provable that can say maybe our community is changing and here's numbers or statistics that we can back that up with, or even that je ne sais quoi of things feel different. I don't feel, you know, that as prideful or I don't feel as safe or I don't feel like we're the community that we used to be. Some of those things are intangible. But I think that we can agree that if you start breaking this down, that it's the small things that lead to a little bit of a bigger thing that lead to, oh my gosh, you know, something like this. And please know that I'm not picking on you guys. It's just a, a good example. So I'd like to offer the example where I live and yeah, you know, I'm hitting middle age, but I remember being in Bedford with, you know, my Plymouth Volari blast in the, you know, the boom box in the back. And I know that we've all been there and you grow out of that. And even at this age, boy, I still like Metallica or the two live crew. I'm one of those weirdos. And I'll have a song on loud for a little bit. We all do that. However, at 303 Center Road, day and night, especially on the weekend, sure, because there's more traffic, but there are, you know, as us old folks want to say the booming system's coming down. And it really, really interrupts the peaceful neighborhood. I have, I have a neighbor that maybe isn't my most favorite person. My other neighbor has been there even longer than my father was, which that property is in you know, my family name for 30 years. So we've, we've got great people there, and we like it. And these booming systems come down the road, interrupting that peace. And, you know, sure, kids will be kids walking by, but sometimes there's going to be big groups and they're yelling obscenities at, if I am having, if I have the name of the street correct, um, Southview and Center, there's like a fourplex, so a multiple family home or, or building, there's broken windows in that building that have been plastic over. And I stopped and took pictures to look, like, am I imagining that? It's these little things. I stopped, there was a police officer in the church parking lot just down for me one morning. So I stopped and I commented, I'm like, I know that it's really low on, you know, safety and what police officers do. But I explained about 
the noise and the radios all hours of the night. He was very polite to me, but it was really quite a brush off. Yes, ma'am, thank you for telling me. We'll keep an eye out. Several years ago, we tried to do that, and we focused on it a little bit, worked a little bit, but, you know, people will be people. So I just want to offer to you that whatever we can do and whatever all of you can do for us, to please do take the little things seriously. Please do make comments to our police officers and, you know, Mr. Mayor, focus on that. It might not seem as big of a deal as a shoplifting down at the Dollar General, and yeah, it's not, but it is what helps lead to the shoplifting. It is what helps lead to the parties that we don't want to have where they're guns. So thank you for your time. I went on babbling a lot, but this is really important to me. I also lived out in Geauga County for many years while my father was aging here. I lived in Auburn. I'm eyeballing probably property really close to you. And I have a little camper, and honest to goodness, that is my plan. And watching what's happening in my beloved hometown, you guys, I don't want to stay here. I was born at Bedford Hospital. My aunt, Marty Motzko, was the superintendent of the schools. I, my heart is here. My father died in his home down the road. He was nearly a lifelong citizen since he was three or four years old. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to stay here anymore. And I'm looking to leave. And that's going to be, you know, another property of who knows one of these, you know, these houses that are being demolished because they're picked up by these uh, uh, realty, whatever. Like, who knows? When folks like me are like, you know what? I can't put the time, money, and effort into the city that I used to love. It adds to it. So thank you for your time, everyone, and please give this a lot of consideration. Well, I, I can give, assure you that those little things are high on our priority list. And the police are aware of that. Yeah. And they do those. It's the old broken window theory. If one's broke, then the next door ones get broke. Yeah. We take that very serious. These other things, this is way, way more serious. And we do take it serious. And we're going to look into more of that and what happened. And if you have video for the police, uh, that would be great. But we do take all that serious because it is the little things that build up. Yeah. And I still think this is a great town to live in. I do not feel unsafe in my town. Unsafe in these instances, that's those things we have to become aware of and then we can deal with them. When we don't know about it, I hadn't heard about it last summer, so. Uh, but we do take that serious. Yeah, I, I, I get it, and you know, it's, you're exactly right. Each thing leads to another, and this is not about me, this is a, about everything else, but just a, for instance, the one neighbor of mine that, you know, the, the parenting is just not there. So their dog and their children run my property and get up on my garage roof, and the police did respond when I asked them to, but this family doesn't care, and so their kids just keep doing this. And so, yeah, it's if that neighbor doesn't care, then you know someone who moves in on that other side might care even less and even less. Right. And, and so great. myself and this great neighbor, we're both ready to go. And though I haven't physically been there the entire 30 years, we're we're a solid block of people who really take great care of things, and both of these properties have the potential to go empty in the next couple of years. But I repeat myself. Thank you for your time. My name is Jennifer Roberts. I reside at 47 Woodrow Avenue. And I just want to say, aside from last this weekend's events, long before our neighbor's house was an Airbnb, I feel unsafe in our neighborhood. I feel my children are unsafe in this city. And you're sitting here telling me this was a big problem. That brush off that she felt over a minor complaint, I felt that brush off from the police this weekend. I felt that we were treated as if we were the nuisance. Was my husband having high emotions during that time? Yes, because we were scared. And he was treated as if he was doing something wrong. We were treated with animosity and attitude from the police officers dealing with us when we encountered them. Prior to the time we encountered them, we've made multiple noise complaints, which we did anonymously because we didn't want our names over the scanner. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't want to be associated out of fear. We had then been told by the police officer that it was our, the reason that they couldn't do anything about the noise complaints was because we made anonymous complaints. If that is the truth, if they need our name in order to follow through with the complaint, why are our dispatchers not telling us this? Why was I allowed to make all of these anonymous complaints, not being told that that gave the complaint less power? That party, we called at least twice on that party before we called about the fight. And the police drove by and did nothing. And when we finally encountered them, we were treated as if we were the nuisance. They stood there and just watched, saying very little. These people disperse. And we were being treated as if we were a nuisance. It was my honest feeling. But I think it's important that you know that you have people in this community. I did not grow up here like my husband did, but I have lived in our home for 14 years. I got married in that home. I had my children in that home. And I am afraid in that home. And not because of this weekend's events. Hello everyone, I'm Felicia Washington. I live at 97 East Interstate. I was not gonna say anything, but uh, since this has come up, um, I've lived in Bedford and Oakwood area all my life, Cuyahoga County. And I do understand and I ditto what you say. Um, I, I do believe Bedford is still a great place to live, but it has become a difference. And I think it's because a lot of people has not been held accountable for their actions. And I'm an African American woman, as you see. And I do believe that the things that's going on in the world today is because of a big difference of race. And when it comes to African Americans, some people kind of stand back a little bit because their fear of being called a racist or whatever, but call, call it for what it is. If you see, um, Youth, which, like I said, I'm African American, and I see it. Disrespect in the African American race, and it needs to be brought up to attention. And they need to be held accountable, as well as their parents. Things need to stop being brushed under the rug. Just because you're black doesn't mean you have to act black. Okay. And I think sometimes the police officers get in a little disarray because of the race. And they really don't mean any harm to overlook you, but um, it's become a political and foolish thing. And um, I think that if we start possibly making, um, get together and have a residence report with the council people in each ward, and uh, certain, um, you know, gather around, get you about uh, four or five uh, residents, uh, in the community with, in each ward and talk to the council people and, and meet um, maybe once or twice a month or so and, and talk about your neighborhood and talk about what you see, you know, when it comes to stuff like that because, like I said, it's a lot of disrespect. And if we don't stop it, and it starts in the home, and if we don't stop it, it's going to get worse. Okay, it's too much, it's too much gun violence, it's too much uh, just loitering and just doing things because you think you can, because you think you can get away with it. And like I said, I will repeat again, yes, I'm an African American woman, and I am not going to sugarcoat anything about the truth. Okay, I call it for what it is, I don't care what color you are, but if I see something, I'm going to call it out. And I see today's world that African American, young black people, um, brown people, they think that there's a target. I can do this and I might can get away with it because I can use the race card. And that's the truth. And pretty much all of you are Caucasian except that gentleman right there. And like I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell the truth. And when you tell the truth, things will be better. So if we can try to, like I said, um, possibly get a residence report, you know, with, with each ward, you know, and, and maybe put it in the, the Bedford Bulletin and see how many people can come out. And you talk with your council person uh, a couple times a month or something like that. And talk about what you see in the neighborhood and see what can be improved. And then um, 
go a little further. Hold these parents and children accountable. Okay, put them in a location where they could start doing some, some work around here, cleaning up the neighborhoods or something. If you see them loitering around, maybe, you know, you put in a bulletin, hey, we see children unaccounted for with their parents just loitering around and looking foolish, okay, and looking like you're going to be disrespectful or something, then we're going to call you out and you and your parents are going to be held accountable. Okay, simple as that. Because if we don't speak and do the right thing, it's going to get chaotic. Okay, we all need to step. Don't be afraid to say anything. If they say, say something because it's a race card, call it for what it is. Okay, it's not a race card for me, it's the truth. And I'm getting sick and tired of being sick and tired because um, black people, brown people think that you can do stuff because of your color. You cannot do that and then get away with it. And this is what we have. And where I live at, back, I called um, the police, I think it might have been probably about, mm, I would say, five, six months ago. And I said, I hear a lot of sirens. Is there something going on? You know, you hear sirens every now and then. I mean, sirens after sirens after sirens. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Too much violence, too much foolishness. And just like he said with the gun thing, what is up with that? You need to be held accountable. If I see you walking down the street, no, I'm not zeroing or targeting you because you're black. I'm zeroing and targeting you to make sure you're doing something respectful. Are you going somewhere to do something positive? Are you doing, and the Bedford City Schools too need to be held accountable. That's where they're coming out of. Bedford City Schools need to be held accountable for what they're doing with these children up there, just letting them lollygag and do whatever they want to do, to and fro. I mean, it's like, it's embarrassing. So something needs to be done about it. And if I could do something to help, I would surely do it. I'm, like I said, I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't care if you don't like me or whatever, but I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. I want to live in a peaceful neighborhood, and we want Bedford City Schools in the city of Bedford to be the best city that people can live in so people like them do not want to move, or me. And I'm not going to move. And, and where I live at, it's, it's always, the bar is right there. And I will, I will go out, I have a bullhorn, and I will tell them, <laughs> shut it down real quick. You know, I'm not afraid of it because I want peace, you know, and, and I will tell them in a minute, you know, settle down, stop the arguing, you know, my family will say, Mom, don't get involved. No, I'm getting involved. That's the problem. People don't get involved anymore. They're afraid. That's right. You know, so don't be afraid. If we all get together and they'll see, because see, if we don't tell them right from wrong, how will they know? And see, some of the parents don't know either because the parents is raised the way they're raising their children, so they don't know either. And I'm not just saying this with black people. I'm saying it because I'm black, okay? Now, the Caucasians, you can deal with your people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying it because I'm an African-American black woman, okay? So, I mean, I'm, I'm serious about this because it's a, it's a lot going on. You see all the shootings and everything. And if we don't hold control and let them know we love them and hug them, we love you. We're not doing this to chastise you because we don't like you. We want to know what, what can we do. Let's, or maybe just have a youth find something like, like he said, you want to do Juneteenth. Okay, so Juneteenth, okay, Juneteenth is about African American, but put it for more, more than that. Okay, put something else in there, you know, where you, let's, you know, gather a bunch of youth from, what, well, we might as well say kindergarten because the kindergartens are getting kicked out of school. So what's up with that? So we got to do something within the whole community to let them know we love them. And we're not trying to chastise you because we don't like you. We love you. We want you to live longer. We want you to live on this earth and see the best that you, be the best that you can be. And in order to do that, somebody has to tell it, because if we don't tell them, how will they know? 
and we just brush it under the rug, you know, and the cell phones and everything has become the parents. I don't have time for that kid. So we buy these expensive cell phones and give to the children. And that's what they're living off of, and that's what they learn. And then when you talk to them, and then the parents, if you try to, to help the children, the parents will say, that's my kid. I don't need you talking to my child like that. You talk to me. But then when you're talking to them, you're still talking to the kid because they're just like their children. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something needs to be done about that. And, and, and like I said, I did know what you say, you know, but uh, better to be a better person, better place to live. We just all have to get together and let them know that we love them and we care about them. But uh, being rogues and ruggish and thuggish and foolish and all that, and then walking around with your pants sagging, it, isn't that uncomfortable? <laughs> and then you're like this? I mean, come on, what, why? Okay, it's like, so, you know, somebody has to have some decency to get to these people, you know? So, if, uh, you know where I live, if you want me to help you out some kind of way, give me a bigger bullhorn, and I will, you know, I mean, because we really have to do something about this. Because today might not be tomorrow at the way we're going. It's just too much. We don't have them. I don't know about a lot of gun violence because I don't hear much. And I don't think that they want to come near my house with that because they probably know about me, okay? They probably heard it through the grapevine. You don't want to go by that lady's house. That's why she's got those bushes right there, okay? But... We don't want the gun violence to get so bad where we're, we don't even want to go outside. We don't want that. We don't want to be fearful of being able to walk down the street with our dogs and things or our cats and, or whatever. Okay, so we, we, we got to get this under control and the police really have to stop being fearful because that's what they were doing. They were fearful because I, I, I believe they probably were African American people, right? One. Just one? One out of, one out of four. Police, Police officers, one out of four. No, I'm talking about the, the people that stayed in Airbnb. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, see, I didn't even have to, I already knew. I, I, I think it's just showing a little bit of prejudice. Um, I, Who, me? Yes. Me being prejudiced? Just because you're black doesn't mean you can't be No, I'm not prejudiced. I'm, I'm real. I'm a product of Bedford, and, and I'm, a, I'm a product, and I've purchased many properties throughout Bedford Heights, Oakwood, and I've rehabilitated them, and I've done many things throughout Bedford, and did great things. So when you say these things, you say, just because you're black, you don't have to act black. What does that mean? Does that mean when you say act black? What does that see, mean? What you, what see, you that, mean? that, that, me and you, see, that's what causes what's going on now. Because if you don't tell the truth, then that's what we got. Okay? <coughs> so, okay, you say act black. No, but when we get together after, we can talk. Uh, okay. We can get on with the council business. Okay, but I, I hear what you're both saying, and it's it's important things to say. Yes, it is. So, yep. hey, you can call me anytime. I will. Thank Ooh. you for your time. Well, my name is Sabrina Future, and I live at 15 Charles Street. I purchased that home to be a ministry home to help young ladies and children go to a good school other than Cleveland. I got sick and ended up moving in the home myself and it became the healing home. I chose Bedford because my family is from Southern Illinois. My grandmother, she ran a bar and it was the black bar, but it was our community center. My grandmother has been gone since 98. My mother passed at that hospital that went away a year ago. So I'm here because out of almost 20 family members in two years, none of it COVID, I'm serious about my life. And I want it to be for a purpose. I chose Bedford because it reminded me of where my family was, Southern Illinois. I like Bedford. It's family friendly. But we do have our issues. I, um, wow. Well, Thank you for what you've been doing. I was traumatized from what they said. And I'm getting weak at the knees now because I grew up in Warrensville. And I experienced a time when I was afraid 
because the police couldn't handle what was going on. And I literally heard the police tell my family, if they catch that person before they did, they'll come pick up the body. And guess what? They came and picked up the body. So fear, I know all about it. But I'm a woman of God now. I'm not afraid to die. And I'm not afraid of people. Everything I've heard today is a reality. And the truth of the matter is, we are all guilty. Every system in America is broken. The schools, our health care, our cities, our government. And if we don't become people who are afraid of the ultimate judge, we're really in trouble. The only help for us, and I don't mean to discriminate, but it's for the people who love God and who love people. We all are accountable. We all are at fault of what we have. Because some people turn their heads, some people close their eyes, some people just disregard it for whatever. Political position, status, don't want to get involved, whatever. I'm here to say I was Oh, 2013, I was at the YMCA, the youth program director for the teen court program. I worked with the late Detective Harry Edwards and Officer Collins, and we had a program that was very successful. The teenagers that came to there was breaking the law, and the success rate was 95 to 98 percent. And the reason being is because we were all involved. The schools, the Y, the police, we all came together and would have these monthly meetings talking about the troubled kids. They would come through our program. We would give them community service. It, it got to the point where I saw the problem was the family. And I started going into the homes of the family so I could glean what was going on in the family. I asked the police officer at the library, what are we doing with our kids here when they get in trouble? We have nothing. We have nothing. We need to fix this. She's volunteered. The committee I heard you say, we don't even have it. We need committees. Because we need more than just you all's voice. We need the residents, the citizens, the business owners involved. It it's going to take all hands on the deck. As far as feeling um, disrespected, I got that in this, in this council room with my own council person. When I questioned him about a picnic table on my street, not there anymore. That picnic table that Mr. Fulhari removed was an answer to prayer. Because I prayer walk my neighborhood. Because I know sometimes we as people won't do anything, but God will move. And I can remember walking on my street from that playground because no bench was there. Babies from the daycare going over there can't even eat lunch. And I couldn't even go over there and sit down. And I walked and prayed when I'm on my way back, but my heart was so broken. I was walking down the street praying and crying. But I looked up to God and I told God about it. I didn't call Mr. Malice. I didn't call nobody. I told God. And guess what he did? He sent World Changers International. They came, they made it beautiful, they brought the picnic table. God answered with them, and you guys approved it. And then Mr. Flahari comes and takes the table away. I don't know if I'm African American, I don't know what I am. Because I had a white grandfather and an and a, and, and a Indian grandmother. So I don't know what I am, and it really don't matter. What I am is a woman of God who loves God, and I love everybody, even those who treat me wrong. I still love you. I want to say, we are in a state of want to volunteer and help. Why? Because I homeschooled my own grandson. Because he was being mistreated in school. Fourth grade. And we had to pull him out because of the mistreatment of a young black boy. And I told my daughter, we would not subject him to mistreatment for education. We would educate him ourselves. 
I homeschooled my grandson and we used what Sister Dyke said the slave used to teach them to read the Bible. We took the King James Version Bible, we took the Daily Bread. My grandson learned to read in third grade and when he went to the fourth grade back to the a private school, they, tutored, they assessed him, he was reading middle school. All from phonics and the King James Version. I'm saying that to say, this is a state of emergency for our kids, you know, across the state. Because of COVID and all of the other family matters, they're not reading. I want to volunteer and help our kids, but I want to do it at the park. I need the benches there so I can bring these kids and their parents, like what she's talking about. I'm familiar with talking with parents. I don't have a fright, but I need this city to do minor things. That's something minor. I know we had problems with the kids. They said, the park. I talked to the policemen. They said it wasn't that big of an ordeal. So I'm asking for the picnic table to be put back so I can help these kids. I'm saying I will volunteer to help come up with a committee or something to bring us together. And, and, and let's say this. We need to start having gatherings talking about false fear. Some fear is, his fear is real. But there is some fear going on in our city that's false. They call it false evidence appearing real. People are afraid of people of color or just whatever, the TV, the whatever. We need to get to the table and talk about our issues of bringing up so we can get to know. I do that intentionally because I don't, I was, I was mistreated and someone told me they're afraid because of me. We're friends now. But if that can happen to me as a grown woman, 50 some years old, I have four grandsons. What is gonna happen when they come up? So we need to have these talks, what they said, but even about the biases we all have, so we can get to know each other and learn how to communicate and relate with each other in a healthy, respectful way. Because if I can be put out of the council chambers just because we have a difference of opinion, that's a strong evidence that something's real and something's wrong. So I thank you for listening. I'm here. Um, I'm here. Tag, I'm it. And we all gonna work this thing together because as she said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay because this is where I know God called me. So God bless you. Thank you for your service. But don't think that we can't do it together. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, just like to speak on behalf of uh, some of the things I heard today. I'm Evan P. from 43 Woodrow. Um, I know we said a lot about the police in the, uh, in the neighborhood and whatnot, but uh, me and Mark, and we've always had a good rapport. I'm uh, pretty sure we still will have. Uh, you guys know we love Mark and Madrawa. We use each other's uh, blind words and whatnot. Um, I actually graduated from Bedford. Uh, I actually do like the area, and like you guys said, I won't be going anywhere either. Um, but if you use me as an example, um, Bedford school is, school system, I do not feel like it's failing, and I do not. I have yet to see any gun violence in Bedford. I'm not saying that it, what you said didn't happen. I'm just saying what I, I haven't seen, and I've been in Bedford for the majority of my life. Um, but I do want to point out that. Um, me and my partner, Kareem, we take full accountability for the uh, actions of the party. Even though we weren't aware, uh, I don't want to rest that all on the police shoulders because if we would have known about this, we would have not let that happen. And now that we do know, it will not happen, so we, won't, we don't want to put that directly on um, the police system. I want to say that we take accountability for that. And w what you were saying here earlier, when I heard you speaking, you were saying, you know, just pull up on some of these black kids and ask them what are they doing and where they're going. That right there can be a problematic situation. Right. I don't think that that's something that we should be encouraging. Right. Because, like I said, I, that's more so racially profiling is what that would be called. So I, that, just, wanted, I just wanted to point that on. I just wanted to make that very short. Excuse but, me one second. But that, me saying it like that, that's not what I really meant. Okay. I don't really mean to racial profile and walk up or drive up and say, what are you doing? So there has to be um, a monologue and dialogue way to do it. It has to be written in stone. Okay put on a sheet of paper on how they would address to see loiters or people that's walking around in the street to look 
as if they're doing something that they have no business doing. Once again, I don't agree with no, that. We're, we're kind of getting yeah, way off track. track. I, just want to, I just want to point out that we take full accountability, and you can use me as an example. So no, no, it's, it's all important stuff. Yeah. And, and I agree with what you guys are saying. Uh, and I believe it. Uh, and we can talk about this after. To get on with the, the matters at hand. Here. Exactly. I agree. Um, but not to shut you down or say it's not important. It is important. And I believe what all you're saying. And in your case there, I know we're looking into that more with the police to see just what did happen. And uh, the, our police go through, they're required to go once a year for, if you want to call it sensitivity training or whatever. Our guys do it, what, twice a month? Or once a month? Way more than they have that learn how to do these things and how to talk to the kids. Um, so that stuff is happening here in town. Anyhow. No, I agree. And I, 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 just point, up and I would just point out that I didn't want to make this a, a race-related thing. I was our isolated incident. I mean, we're going to address it. We want to make sure it doesn't happen. I just, I just didn't want to make this a race-related thing. And I actually want to actually give Bedford a little bit more credit. And that's, that's just where I'm at with it. And I'll make it really short. Thank you, guys. For yeah, and, and I appreciate that. And, and I've been trying to work uh, for a while now with uh, Bishop up the street get together some of these talks. Uh, we got to be a little more aggressive to get this thing going, but it's all important. And, and thank you all for your comments. I mean, this is stuff we need to sit and talk about. This is probably not the forum to do it in. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Could I ask you one thing? And this is not about the race. It's about your Airbnb. Um, I know I've stayed in some Airbnbs, and I know some people that had some. Do you have like monitors outside your your home where you can monitor from your phone no. and see the activity? If no, we do not. Oh. We should, and we will have to. Do okay. Uh, anyone else? Hey, Tom Peterich, uh, one three seven Santa Circle. Uh, I came across something. Someone sent it to me. By the decision made uh, at a work session meeting or proposed at a work session meeting on March 20, 2023, about an increase of $9,110 in the economic development budget to, to pay increases for the economic development director on here. As I go through, I'm trying to understand exactly what that director is position. Is she an employee of Bedford? Yes. All right. Is there an issue of a conflict influence with the fact that she's also the head of the First Suburban Consortium? No. Uh, I looked at what they've done, and I, when I read what they're what's being done, especially in regards to you know in housing, there I'm thinking to myself, that's not Bedford though. That is, that's parts of the air, uh, of Cleveland that are so old that the place lots were small because they didn't even have cars then. I mean that's why that's how Bicentennial Village was remade. They had to cut up the whole thing and chop it up. I don't understand where an emphasis in that. I'm looking to myself says, what exactly does she do here? I understand that she worked with you on that, but I, I as far as um, what what activities are taking place aside from Tinker Street, which I know is a big thing and they've worked on a lot, what activities are taking place right now in finding other businesses to fill in the gaps here? I mean, I, but, and I'll tell you what got me is because I was in the insurance business and I saw a note about $7,500 going in to pay for, uh, to pay for uh, medical insurance and that. And what gets to me is if she is the director of the suburb consortium on that and she's also the economic director of Bedford, who is her primary income? If she's working full time in Bedford. She's that, she's part time at Bedford and part time. What her hours are suffered? How many hours? Roughly 20, 24. I remember speaking to the city of Bedford after the Obamacare thing, two thousand ten. At which point the city of Bedford reduced hours for some of the employees who were making who had thirty hours, so they can drop it below, so they wouldn't have to pay for medical insurance on that on very understandably, because they had law that any employers, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I've been in that, but when there was employees having 
30 hours or more, they were considered full time and therefore had to be covered <coughs> under the insurance. Now, if she's doing 20 hours, are you offering full time med medical benefits for everyone else in, in the city who works in the city of Bedford that's doing 20 hours? Are you offering that to the lifeguards who are doing 20 an hour? So, what's the exception to the rule? $7,500 is a lot of money. And you consider that in the $9,000 increase on that. That's a lot of money. If, if I could just, let, let me yes. just, I could, I could sense that we're targeting an employee. Let me just make something, yes. I, it's my turn to talk real quick. Okay. okay. So, just so, just so we're clear, what you're, you're reading as far as of an increase based on our finance director's appropriations, that money gets moved around. She was okay. not granted a $9,000 pay increase. She yes. was granted, no, 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 I know, but your assumption, I take a little bit of offense to that, because you're assuming we're arbitrarily giving somebody a $9,000 raise, which is, couldn't be further from the truth. So what that is, is she was hired as a part-time yeah. economic development to work in that department, okay? And she works the other time as the First Suburbs Development Council. Understand that there's benefits associated with her job. What we what the costs are for her medical, every other community of the first suburbs, based on their dues, the first suburbs reimburses Bedford. Okay. So if we had a full-time employee, Bedford would have to pay roughly $18,000 for benefits. Okay. We're paying our employee half of that. Okay. As far as what she does, I mean, I, I, I don't want to go through the laundry list of items um, because it's substantial. All of the grant dollars that the city has received over the course of the last five years, she has been a direct writer of all of those grants. Mm -hmm. All of those. Hundreds of thousand dollars a year, some of them. Last year she brought in $700,000 to redo the commons. Okay. okay. The city's expenses for that one employee is just under $50,000. Okay. Well, I think there's some benefits of that, that offset of what this city is getting. So I know you have it in your craw because you've questioned it, and now you publicly brought up that that employee received a seven or nine thousand dollar raise. That's an appropriation because based on the way we have to budget, all of that doesn't go into one pool, sir. There's the city of Bedford's economic development budget, which is roughly we'll just talk salary, mm -hmm. just under fifty thousand dollars. Then the city, just like Cleveland Heights was when she was employed with Cleveland Heights. Yeah. The city is required to be the fiduciary agent of the first suburbs. There's salaries in there too. When it comes pay, you move money to cover a pay. I know, you're confused, and we yeah, can sit down yeah. and go over that. But there's the way we budget, we don't control the first suburbs budget. It's voted on by every mayor and city that does that. Okay. The finance director is the fiduciary agent of that entity. We don't have a control. If they choose to give her a raise, they vote on it, they pay the dues, the dues come into the city, and it's in a separate account. Okay. You're right. It is confusion. Because when I read about it, I looked at this. Correct. But, don't, but please right. don't but come up and say. I'm not. Uh, we, yes, you did. What did I say? That she was granted a $9,000 raise. Well, this That's is what, what you said. This is where it's coming on. I mean, it's, this is, uh, I, got, I looked it up. I went on. A work session meeting, Bedford City Council meeting. Appropriations. And I just read this part, and it says all present, and then down the line, and then at the end, $9,110 increase in economic development budget due to an increase for economic development director. I didn't say economic development economic director. For me, I'm asking, did you, was she given a $9,110 raise? No. Okay, well, I mean, that's what I'm reading from. It says, no, that it says if it's budget. not, that's great. I'm glad. That's what I'd like to know that it wasn't that on that. I'm not questioning on that, but I what I'm reading here on here, confusing enough because I know that says different amounts, but it was that nine thousand dollars that stood out. Because me, nine thousand dollars, that's a that's a huge raise. Uh, if you read it, you just read it. It's a nine thousand dollar budget increase, not a raise. All right. It's into the total budget of that position. Okay. Then to pay increase for the economic development director. So was that $9,000 then into the economic development department on that to be spread apart? That I'm reading this and 
Well, why don't we talk to you after the meeting and try to explain it? Okay, to you. please. I mean, and we, I think we're all very pleased with Ms. Kuzma's uh, efforts, and, and on behalf of the city, she does she does do a lot that you're unaware of. Uh, yes, I am unaware. Very That's much. what I would really like to know about. Well, she 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 more than covers her salary. I guess. I, I I don't question that, but the, the thing is, I like to know I'd like to know what is happening on that because when all we see is a budget and we see this number on that. I would come to my mind if 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 someone asked me what I did and I didn't tell it, but I told them I made so much money doing nothing at all on that, or not to say she didn't do anything, but if people asked me and I wouldn't tell them what I did, then I would they would I would expect them to question how why I make that much. If I even made that much, I don't really. But the point there is the statement here about an uh, uh, increase for the salary of a person over nine thousand dollars. I think most people would look upon that and say. Well, it sounds like someone got a nine thousand dollar raise, and it was explained. Well, not on this piece of paper here that came from from the web page. But... All right, I'll. You I'll... come to enough meetings, you know how we appropriate budgets all no. the time to switch money. We I... vote on it regularly. I don't know how to do that. Well, then we'll explain it later. Okay. No. Thank you. Real quick, I just want to say what just took place. If we're going to move forward as a city. He had a legitimate question. I appreciate someone checking in, Alex's. I mean, because you guys know, but we should know. There shouldn't be any confusion, Mr. Malice. Don't get upset with this man for doing his job. I'm grateful that he's here, because I don't understand this. So if we want to move forward, no one is above the law. We should all be held accountable. We see cities with corruption. And this is how we avoid it. So everybody um, grow up and get some patience and some maturity. Because some of us don't know what we're doing, but those who do, let's roll with them and answer his questions so we can understand. And we will watch what we did. Because it don't have to be no private side meeting. If he asks a question in public, answer it in the public. Yeah, so, we did. Okay, but I'm just saying, don't get upset with him. Like he's getting upset now. He's the one put me out. Come on, grow up. We're all professionals. Oh, no, no, let's let's stop right now. No, I'm just saying. You see how this man is acting because this man asked a legitimate question. Yeah, we answered it. And the question was answered. Nine thousand dollars got the community. Yeah, but they got upset with him. That was their answer. They shouldn't have got upset. Nine thousand dollars brought in hundreds of thousands for the community. Send up. Yes. Yes. You still yes. should get upset with the citizen. Okay. Let's go. Everybody getting. Yeah. No, I'm not upset. And we we understand you know, all of that. And yeah, we're going to look into the other situation. They are looking in the other situation. Um, thank you. No, no, that I it's just have a motion for adjournment. Really because, no, but I appreciate it. Uh, uh, they've got reason for it. Asbury, call the roll, please. Coachy? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Judas? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. 